Namaste. How's it going? Our energetic circuitry is complex and interesting, but once they happen, uh, it's actually easy to understand. All right, so let me talk about nadis. Nadis means the flow, or these are the pathways of the energy. Yeah, so they affect both physical, yeah, energetic, as well as mental, psychological, and even our emotional and spiritual state. All right, so they are like the sponge, so they absorb whatever is flowing through our body. Not just the energy, toxins, even mental stress, injury, even after we've healed, yeah, so they end clogging the nadis. So these are like the absorbers of our energy. So the more they're open, the more they're um, purified or cleansed, yeah, the more they can absorb. Yeah, so this is where the practices, so for example, pranayama, you know, is very helpful because pranayama is the most potent uh, technique for irrigating and cleansing our energetic channels. All right, so now these, um, there are like three fundamentals, um, important ones, right side, pingala, left side, ida, and the mid channel, the shishumna. All right, so let me uh, focus on the right and the left channels. Okay, now, you might be feeling um, one side of you is tighter, one side is more sensitive. While the other one, you can barely feel it. It's normal. Okay, so left side is actually more open for most of us. Or even if you feel them quite balanced, yeah, as you go through the techniques, yeah, as you break free from those blockages, this uh, difference will manifest. All right, so why is that so? All right, so this is um, how I feel the nadis as I you know, flow the energy through them. All right, so the right side, although they start, you know, they, they start together here, the tip of uh, the thumb or the big toe, and then pierces inside like they're coiling. Okay, yeah, so their action is the same as they coil through the legs and the hips, but yeah, inside the hips, the left side is actually flowing outward. So the nerve, yeah, this is how I feel it, like the channel that the nerve yeah, goes out, yeah, and it travels yeah, to the side, yeah, here, the collarbone, and down the arm. Right. As opposed to the right channel, yeah, although they start, the right, the pingala, yeah, starts there, the right, and goes in, but inside the hip, it goes in. Yeah, like it pierces inside the, the crease of the hip. Let me just get my spines. Uh, I'll give you more visual explanation. So the left side, yeah, the ida goes out and it travels to the side here, yeah, around the collarbone and out through the elbow and then even the hand, you know, the arm and the hand. All right, so however, the pingala goes inside. Yeah, so from the hip, it goes in. Yeah, goes up there, yeah, and here, yeah, it separates. All right, so like the pingala has two branches, yeah, but the ida has two branches too. However, the ida we barely feel it, yeah, but the pingala we can feel it. Like from here, from the heart space, yeah, one goes up, yeah, to the nostril, while the other one travels outside, and then down to the elbow. Uh, that is why when you're doing your breath regulation, so you might be at this stage already, you're feeling the difference. When you're doing your breath regulation, especially retention down the right side, you can feel that you can actually yeah, bring the, the breath yeah, to those lines. Like you can feel yeah, from the hip, it goes in. Yeah. And then from the chest, yeah, you can pierce it here, up, and then even the brain while the other branch goes to the side and then down the elbow and even dissipate on the arm and the hand. Whereas in the ida, yeah, the left side, when you spark through the left side, like it's so open. Yeah. You're feeling the breath, but uh, it's, it's more of like just a, a widespread sensation. It's not as thin, and it's not as isolated, and it's not as um, coiling, yeah, as the right side. Like it from yeah the nostril, you can feel it's it's expansive, outward. Yeah, although you can feel the breath go up the brain, it's not as um, linear. It's not as isolated. It's not as 
um, pointed as your yeah, right side. The right side, yes, you can feel it, right? Like uh, the, the right side of the lung, the chest is slightly tighter. Yeah, and then you can feel the spaces there. Yeah, and then from here, from the chest region, from the heart, the Anahata Chakra, yeah, you can feel the breath go here, the sensation, I mean, and the other branch goes down the shoulder and the arm. Yeah. And then it ends here, right? The tip of the nose, or this one, yeah. Good. And it goes up. Yeah. So when you're breathing through the left, however, through the left, like it can go straight up to the brain, but it's not as pointed. Yeah, it's more of a widespread sensation. And then like the right, the left channel is so open and free. Mm. All right. So um, this, is in, this is helpful. Why? Yeah. When you've realized this, yeah, you will be able now yeah, to channel yeah, your awareness and your breath while you meditate. Yeah, because during meditation, yeah, the breath would have to you know, go light. Actually, you don't have to do and force the breath to go light, so it will just happen light because you're not moving. Yeah. Therefore, the alignment of your body would have to suit yeah, the nature of the energy. All right. So I've been through this uh, many times during meditation. Um, if I, te if I lean my weight to one side, for example, I'm sitting and you know, the body pours to that side because this is the more active side, the right side. So to counter that, uh, so you need to do some adjustment in the legs. All right. So normally, yeah, the left leg crosses under. Yeah. So if you're doing the sakasana, all right, left leg under, and bring the right, yeah, just under that shin. No, that, I don't know. The reason being, so this prevents you from shifting too much of your weight towards your yeah, right side. So you can adjust, and then the left side, somehow, yeah, because the, the left leg is pouring onto the right shin, so this will weigh down into your left channel, so the weight of the leg. In the Shavasana, for example, you're doing your Shavasana. All right. So to make room yeah, for the breath to easily pierce through your right channel, the Pingala, yeah, so you might want to yeah, place something here, just under your uh, right shoulder, for example. Let me just get this one. Yeah. You might place something just under the right side of the shoulder, yeah, not just to lightly elevate this, so this one opens, all right. And then you might want to turn your head towards the left, so it's open, yeah, because yeah, since the right side, yeah, is not really tight, but the nerve there, the nerve is more sensitive. Yeah, piercing the breath because the right side, the pingala, is more active. You have to make room for that side to open so you can draw the sensation up. Yeah. One of the challenges of meditation, especially when the kundalini is about to pierce the brain, yeah, the, the, the energy gets stuck either in the throat or in the chest. Right? And then you lose it. Once the energy gets stuck, you won't be able to breathe. And you have to come back and then do the process again. And then by opening that side and just allowing that side of you to slightly open by shifting yeah, the weight of your body or the alignment of your body to the other side, you open this. Yeah, so you either place your yeah, cushion there. So this one gives a lift. If you're sitting, yeah, so have your left leg yeah, cross under and just place your right on top. So you need the left knee will yeah, do the counter. Yeah. Because if you do this one, yeah, so there's a tendency for you to really lean over the side yeah, because the knee is yeah, pouring on the side. Whereas if you shift, 
use the opposite leg, use the opposite, yeah, to lightly, yeah, counter, so you're not, yeah, leaning to that side of you, which is more active, yeah, for most of us, it's the pingala. All right, so, 